So Cinematic Compositor version 2 is out now. For those who don't know what Cinematic Compositor is, it's an add-on that helps you get that cinematic look in just one click. It has colour grading, film emulation, lens flare, film grain, and more cool features that improve your renders a lot. This is a complete guide on how to use the add-on. You'll find the link for the add-on in the description. It's available on both Superhive and Gumroad, but the link in the description will get you a discount on the Gumroad version. You just have to enter the amount here and proceed with the next step. Once you purchase the add-on, you'll get to this page. You'll find the latest version here, which is 2.0. There are also old versions available for you to try out. For those who have already bought the add-on, you'll get the update for free. Just check your library. For this video, I'm obviously going to showcase the latest version. Make sure you click this button to download the add-on. Installation is pretty easy. Just make sure you're using Blender version 4.4 or above to make this work. You can check your version on the bottom right corner. Mine is 4.5, which is the latest one right now. Go to Edit Preferences and go into the Add-ons tab. For those who have the old version installed, like 1.4, you'll need to uninstall it. Once it's uninstalled, save the preferences and restart Blender. Now click this arrow button and install from local directory. Select the zip file and install it. Save the preferences and close it. I have this demo scene here. To use the add-on, open this side panel and open the Cinematic Compositor tab. Just apply the effect and nothing happened. This is because you have to enable viewport compositing. Now it already looks perfect. Before we move to the settings, let's talk about these two options. This will mute the effect so you can see the difference. And if you run into any issues with visual quality, you can just clear the effect and apply it again. Note that you can't just add a cube and rely completely on the add-on to get you that cinematic look. Even though it does a very good job on the default cube, you still have to put some effort into your lighting and textures. I've made some guides for cinematic lighting and photorealistic texturing, so you can check them out as well. Links are in the description. Now let's talk about the settings. You can directly change the settings here, or you can go into the compositor. First, we have color grade. Pretty simple. You get two options, the classic teal and orange, and the golden look. I always prefer teal and orange, but you can try both. The default values are almost perfect, so if you mess up, just put your mouse cursor on the value and press backspace. It will reset the value. After that, we have color effects. It has a black and white effect, which reminds me of Dune 2. There's also color focus. What it does is isolate a single color. To use it, increase the factor and play with the hue of the color, but I think red is mostly used. There's also tint. The one I set by default gives something like the Matrix movie. Next is film emulation. It has an overall slider to control all values together. These default values give the best results, but you can play with them if you want. Lens flare has a lot of settings, so for now I'll go through the basics. To make lens flare work, you have to play with the threshold value. How it works is, if it's set to 200, only emission objects with a strength of 200 will show the effect. I usually lower the threshold until I find a good spot. You have to play with it to get something that looks right. And of course, the strength controls the intensity of the lens flare. I'll come to the advanced settings later. After that, we have lens effects, which has lens distortion and chromatic aberration. Then we have vignette and film grain, pretty simple settings. Overlays add imperfections. The strength value works like intensity, and the add-on comes with some fingerprints and stain textures, which can be controlled by these values. It basically works like opacity. There's also a custom mask option. I'll come to that in a minute. Then we have black bars, which give you the cinematic aspect ratio. Let's talk about the advanced settings in the compositor. You can access the add-on menu from here as well, but we're not going to use that right now. If you're rendering alpha, connect the alpha from the render layer into the node group. Add a set alpha node and place it after the compositor node. This will make sure the alpha works correctly. If you're using Blender 4.4, the alpha goes directly into the composite node. They just changed this in the new version. Further down, you'll find the Lens Flare tab. The first best thing is that I've added the option for a custom mask. 
Let's say you only want lens flare at a certain position. What you can do is render a black and white mask like this and plug it into the socket. This will give you lens flare, even if there's no bright light spot. Let me show you one more example. This point light doesn't create any lens flare because it's not visible to the camera. What you can do is add a UV sphere and position it with the point light. Once that's done, add an emission shader to it. Hide the objects behind the light and add an emission shader with zero strength to the objects that block the light. Go into color management and switch this to standard. Make sure to save this file separately. Also set the output directory for the mask as well. Now switch the render mode to material preview and go into the camera. Open this tab and render viewport animation. This will render super fast. If you think the mask looks weird or has glitches in material preview, you can render it out in cycles as well. Just decrease the sample count and you'll be good to go. Now import the image sequence and plug it into the custom mask socket. Play with the strength until you get something you like. Lens flare has more options you can experiment with. One more thing before we move on. Use a black body node to change the color of the anamorphic glare. For example, if I want the glare for the sun, I'll use a black body node set to 5800 Kelvin and connect it into the tint. Further down, you'll find overlays. This also has a custom texture socket. I have this black and white droplets texture that you can get from my Patreon for free. Link is in the description. Just connect any texture you want. It doesn't have to be droplets and you'll get a cool effect. The best part about the add-on is that it is completely based in the compositor. So this allows you to apply this effect on rendered frames as well. For best results, always export your renders in OpenEXR with these settings. This stores a lot of data that helps in the compositing stage and it's necessary for the add-on to work at its best. Now open a new file and head to the compositor. Open the side panel and apply the effect. Delete the render layer and add your render image here. You might need to change the resolution to make sure you get the correct aspect ratio. You can preview the result like you normally do, or you can just render it out, which will take a few seconds. Thanks for watching, and I hope Cinematic Compositor improves your renders and takes them to a new level.